talk about reviews, ways to get them, why we like them, why we hate them. Sorry, Rob. Rob <laughs> has a whole about reviews. So let's start with Rob. No, oh, no, no. Yeah. Let's start with you. Get, get us the, give us the positives and, and give folks so, the rundown on reviews, and then I'll come back and shit on it right before we end. How's that? Okay. So, so um, in this day and age, with self-publishing being such a big thing, um, one of the issues that comes up a lot is poor editing, um, the lack of like reviewing their work and going back through and you know improving it it's like they the shit on my stuff it's because there can be only one you guys are distracting me let, let, let her go she's trying <laughs> i was fighting back with my lethal back scratcher don't mess with me again mister this is the highlander sword Ooh, man. that's very nice jr is trying to make a serious point yes Sorry, right. I'm sorry. I couldn't help it. Go, please. I'll shut up. Go ahead, JR. In 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 with people self-publishing, a lot of them are just writing up something and putting it out. They've gone through no process of editing. They've gone through no process of refining. They don't even bother to do grammar and spell checks. And without reviews where people are warning you, hey, by the way, they didn't edit this, this and it's a complete fucking clusterfuck. It's not just one review that you look at, but multiple ones. And if you see three, four, five people giving the same complaint, then you know there's a problem. And frankly, I ain't got time to be reading shit that I have to translate because somebody didn't write it out correctly. And, right. and th there's two ways to look at it. There's the customer viewpoint and the author viewpoint. And both can be used as good tools. As a customer, I always read reviews when I go on Amazon and buy something. If I'm buying a new set of speakers, I'm going to go look at the reviews. I'm going to go read through them. Now, if there's one review that says it's a complete pile of flaming crap and there's 20 reviews that say it's great, then I'm going to err on the side of great because that's what most people are saying. You're always going to have the outlier when it comes to reviews. Yeah, it's the same thing with buying it like clothes. You look at the reviews to tell you if they're if they're the right size, if they if they're size small, if the material is scratchy and all those things, it's the same way with books. And then exactly. you've also got all the sales algorithms <laughs> where things like Amazon don't even fucking put your book up into a noticeable category necessarily if you don't have at least 50. That's correct. And, 50 reviews. That's the part that I'm not thrilled about. Um, well, and I can understand bullshit. where that's a bad thing. But from, from an author... I read reviews. I read what customers... I even put it... I mean, we even did it before. Where we actually... I actually put it in the books. I don't know if I've got one here that has it. Hold on. Let me check. You know, I think it's the... Uh, do I have that... Re yeah. On the back end of my book, don't forget to review. You know? Oh, that's a good I'm, idea. Yeah, well, that way, you know, somebody goes, oh, hey, I read the book, and... You can blame me for that. She actually came up with it. It was a great idea, so it I have a good it. Idea. And I That's have it what we do on Wattpad. When, when we write on Wattpad and ink it, yeah. we usually leave a comment either at the end of the chapter or at the end of the story. Please forget to review or comment on, you know, what you think. And sometimes those are really important. Well, you know, okay. I've, I've had people point out errors that I made. It's like, oh, by the way, you spelled this wrong, or shouldn't this say this instead of this? And I'm like, fuck. Thank you for pointing that out. I'm going to go fix it. I mean, from, there you are. You got that in a review? Yeah. There are yeah. bad reviews. Yeah. I mean, I've had I've... constructive reviews. I've had some bad, mostly good, but it's still the review process lets you know what people like, what people don't like, you know, how they feel about your story. Because we write them, we get people, sometimes we know to read them, sometimes beta readers, but really, a complete stranger taking a look at your book and going, I really liked it except for X, and you have 12 people who say that, you now have a constructive criticism you can use to kind of as a litmus test of what you can do to alter your book to make it better for your fans if you decide to. Okay, I mean, wait. Just, Time yeah. out. Let's, let, me, let me jog left just for a moment. So well, I want to make go. it clear. My sword. Well, hold on. You won't need a sword. Uh, I wanted to I want to establish a little deviation in terms. There is a difference between a review and a rating. Yes. Yes. And so 
So I, I will. Um, I am willing to amend my hatred of reviews and but distrust of them you. because they are so incredibly subjective, and I'm not sure worth a damn. Star ratings are worse. I would rather have a review when somebody tells me what they thought of the book. That's fair. I have yep. no problem with that. But a star rating is no better for one person than that it is for another. And, and the problem is, is that the person who gives you a five because they think it's the greatest book in the world, and, oh, juxtaposed with the person that gives you a one star and says, this is a horrible piece of shit, who's right and who's wrong? And here's the hard answer authors don't want to hear. Both of them. Yes, Both because are everybody, correct. Because yeah. it's individual as it could possibly be. To me, that is not in any way, shape, or form enough of a, a the small t ain't working for me. Statistically, it's insignificant. I if agree you with like you that. on the ratings because, frankly, I have seen things that are awesome rated one or two stars. And I'm yes. when I go to rate something, I'm like, because they make you click the number of stars and I'm like well which wish if you know I need like half points and quarter points and because yeah. you know this is maybe not quite a five star book but it's better than a four star you know so you're just kind of stuck picking something just because you, that's how you have to do it to give your review on some sites and let, me just, half -ass, let me half ass uh, it's not quite a theory I will call it a hypothesis at this point is if for if for some reason somebody in publishing land the publishing gods said oh no you don't we're we're done with this shit and they prohibited ratings or reviews online let's just say reviews are not for you regular reader because it didn't used to be for a long long time right. if that was true and 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 I'm I'm going into the land of supposition on purpose. If they took ratings and star reviews away and obliged you to open up the first three chapters, which you can do electronically, no problem from those retailers. Even on our site can do that. Ab exactly. You can you can have a look and see straight away whether you have somebody who knows what they're doing or a shitbag who isn't interested in spelling or grammar or mechanics. That is the way it used to be. I'm older than all of you by a leap and a bound. When I went into a bookstore in the 80s as a 20-something, I would look through it and just decide for myself. Oh, so Grandpa. This is interesting. It's not, and I would either put it back as it wasn't, or I would take it up and pay for it. If it yes. turns out I don't like the book later, that is on me. That's my problem. That's not the author's problem. I read enough to know whether it was interesting or not. Yeah, and if, and it, if I bought it, then uh, caveat emptor. If I don't like it later, that doesn't mean that I need to go out and attack it. If I thought it's the greatest book in the world, it doesn't mean that I need to go out and champion it. That's not my role. Did I enjoy it? Did I not enjoy it? Ratings? That's a load of horse shit. Who are you to tell me it's a one star to a five star? You didn't yeah. write this piece of shit. And, and so it, it, I get, and the outlier part is a problem. It's never that good. It's never that bad. You're really going to average? Okay, fair argument. Come back and see me after a thousand people do this. My sample size is trustworthy. At 20 to 50 people, not even close. Exactly. And I can see that. But so that, 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 so that's what I wanted to get you guys to discuss. I, I'm, I'll shut up now, but what if there were no star ratings <clears throat> and reviews were not available to anybody out in the, the safety of, and anonymity of internet land? If you did away with them, would that destroy the self-publishing industry? I don't know. I'm asking a question. <laughs> cause some issues it could seriously well, yeah, cause some issues. It's, I mean, not necessarily the ratings well but the the reviews themselves because people are a little more leery if they don't know what other it, there is a group think thing here you are more likely to like something if you notice that other people like it too that's oh, a problem to me. Yeah. That is a big problem for me. Well that's because we're independent thinkers. We don't think in that way. 
Well, let, let me let me run it a little differently because I understand both sides of the coin. Now, from an independent publishing standpoint, it would affect it. I have absolutely no, no absolutely a hundred percent faith it would be detrimental to the independent publishing industry because back in the day in the eighties when I was, you know, a preteen pilfering skin mags from Crown Books in Maryland, um, you know, when I did actually buy a book. <laughs> Who the publisher was meant something more because really that was the only badge of quality you had on a book was the publisher and the author. You had nothing else to go by. In the age of independent publishing, all we have to go by is what everybody else says about the book, really. So you take away that and that would affect independent publishing because if well, you don't know it, you're less likely, if it's a hardcover, to go spend 20 bucks, hell, even 2 bucks on a book unless you're feeling adventurous that day. So I really think with the rise of reviews came the rise of independent publishing. And but I do reviews, think it would affect it. Reviews have always existed. I have been yeah, buying hardbacks. To get one, access one immediately versus one from an advertisement three months later is yeah, different. Well, reviews. no. I'm about in the old, back in the 80s and shit, when we were buying all kind of hardcovers because they were better than paperbacks because paperbacks tore and shit. Uh, right. There was always on the cover flap, you know, the, the, the paper cover, there was always a review by several people that work for newspapers or groups that review books. So we've always had reviews. It's just that it's changed and it's not necessarily the best change. That's my point. I and and let's let's be honest. In the eighties, there there was no such thing as self publishing. You were uh, there were a hell of a lot fewer authors in those days than there are now. Or I should say, okay. authors who got a book published. Yeah. So I have a I have a publisher. I have a, I have editors plural. So I'm not nervous about the quality of my stuff when it goes out. But I sure enough understand the problem with someone who go who self publishes electronically up to. Amazon, it doesn't care one way or the other about if it's a good book or not. We haven't even got to that. If it's well, terribly I poorly written, it's going to be it's going to be in the same bucket. But here's my point: there are still grammar Nazis who ping my book, and I have I've had it edited. So well, so hold on. The mechanism to look into look a few pages into it. It isn't any different if you self published. Then, if you if I, if I go my route with a traditional publisher, you can still determine for yourself whether or not a the, the story is interesting and have if it has shit content you're gonna see it kind of soon if it's not, if it's poorly written and then you can pass before you ever buy it. How in the world does the independent publisher self publishing world suffer? Because of uh, if, if reviews were withdrawn, you still have the opportunity to make the choice for yourself <clears throat> as a reader. Because reviews draw attention. They do. They do. Straight up. I, mean, I, I just put out an the ad for, uh, for Audible the... I posted two of the reviews. So on the ad. Um, and, and that's kind of engaging for a lot of customers. They want to see stuff like that. And they do? They... Yeah, they yeah. do. They okay. really do. They, they want to know what other people that. think. Well, that, then that tells me that they're mentally deficient pieces of shit who need to learn how to read. I'm Go sorry, who's our down. president? Well, honey, up until recently, that I didn't know you that you could look at a few okay. pages of a book online. I didn't know that until I was working on the website and the app that I use, uh, the plugin I use to put our books on the site um, actually has all that. And I Fuck, I didn't know it happened. I didn't know that was there. It never occurred to me. Because if you click on one of the books on the site, it pulls up a page at the very bottom. There's a thing that you can scroll and read the first few pages. Shit, I didn't know that existed. That's oh, there's cool. probably a lot of people that, that don't. But uh, So you're saying that that doesn't extend to everyone when they go to Barnes & Noble or if they go to Amazon to look at a book. Did I mean, at this point, though, don't they know that they can peek a few pages and have a look? Not necessarily. I okay. shop at Amazon all the time. I didn't know. No, that's, a, that's surprising to of me. Course, I just look it at is to me, too. Like, I would have thought. When you go to look at a book, when you go to look at a book, regardless of whether it's a Kindle edition or a paperback, I mean, 98% of, of the books, when you go to the page to just look at them, 
above the thumbnail of the cover it says look inside you crack it open you get like i mean it depends i have mine set to 10 percent you can read the first 10 percent of my of my book on on there and you can expand it to be you know up to a certain amount of chapters or only a few pages or you can do random content you know so yeah, I mean, like there, there definitely is the opportunity to pick up a book and 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 flip yeah, through it. But <clears throat> I never unfortunately, kind of mm-hmm. to go along with what Jr. is saying, though, like people aren't even going to you know do the cyber pick up and flip through thing unless you have a number of reviews, both a quantity of reviews and a quality of reviews in terms of stars that makes you seem right. legitimate. You know, they legitimize you in a, in a really unfortunate way. I will so say, it's the confidence uh, to, the, to the reader uh, that the other yeah. people have read this book and liked it. Right, I mean, well, that's book. the thing. They, they look at it, they go, oh, this is worth my time just to crack the cover. You know, yes. that's the thing. Then they make their own decision past that. Well, I mean, let, let's look at how they look at a book. They're coming across, they see a book, they're going to look at the cover. That's their first judgment. Yeah. Title, second mm-hmm. judgment, third yeah. They're going to look at that star review, even though Rob hates it. How many stars does it have? How many reviews? Then they might or might not read those reviews. And they'll look at that and go, from this, okay, I'll try the book. Yep. Yes. You know, it's always See, a checklist. I'm guilty, of, I'm guilty of that when going through programs. If yeah. a program has a low star review, I don't even fucking bother with it. Yep. Because enough people have, and I do check to see how many out of those people, how many voted. So I know if it's like 20 people voted and they gave it two stars, well, maybe they don't know what the fuck they're doing. But if 200 people vote and it's got two stars, then I know this is a piece of shit program and I'm not going to bother with it. I'm going to look for something better. Well, we, I wonder we know how many people do, though. Let's hear it. Does anyone know when you guys go through analytics, Ray pays attention to this stuff. JR, you're really good with analytics. Is there some way to really know? How many people buy a book, for example, if you just find one retail outlet and you discover how many people bought a book, if it was 100 people, how many people, I mean, they know how many people bought the book, how many people reviewed it? I'll bet you it's About a very small minority. One to three percent. One yeah, to three I, percent. I have, I have 2.5 percent. So that, yeah, so that tells you. that tells you three percent on average. Arithmetically, you, you that will tell you right away. The reviews and the stars on the grand scale are worthless. They're not helping. They, they maybe not be hurt. Maybe they're not hurting. But I don't see how they help in, with such a, a tiny sample size and B, such a, a, a low ratio of purchase to, to, well, it to does review or rate. It does tell you how, how popular that piece is. Let me give you an example. If I'm looking at Kindle Unlimited and I see The Handmaid's Tale, it's got 14,000 reviews. Uh, Harry Potter, Sorcerer's Stone, 15,000 reviews. Highlands, The Moon is a Harsh Mistress, 625 reviews. You know, Lindsay Hall's Trial by Faye is 81 reviews. Crawford's Dark King is 101 Fellowship of the Ring by Tolkien is 9,000 reviews. So that kind of gives you an idea of where these books are, how long they've been around, how long they're read, and how long they're exposed. Obviously, Handmaid's Tale gets a big boost because it's a TV show everybody loves. Um, I don't okay. love it. Okay. But, but you, look, you can look at the books and you can see where they're at review-wise. You know, just an idea. I mean, there's some with 10, 26, 12, 7, 41. It's all over the place. But it really depends on how long is a book established, how many people are reading it. I can tell you from looking at that, a lot of people read The Handmaid's Tale. Um, The thing with Mm -hmm. reviews is that the people that review are either A, either way in love with the story or way hate the story, or they are loyal people who like that author or they follow this particular publisher because they provide the books that they like to read. And, you know, it's kind of a, you, you have to push for people to review. And that's like Ray did his promo thing. Give me a review. I'll give you a free copy. Yeah. I basically, I mean, I, I, I bribed for reviews just in the audible sense. And it was actually, it worked out really well. Um, and that was, a. a, thing that I launched to do that was, hey, go review my book. I will give you the promo code. If you if you do and come back and show me a review, I'll give you the promo code for the next one. So you get the next one free too. And then you review that and get the next one free. 
So my now, audience terms, are stacking up like that. In terms that? of analytics, to bounce back onto onto that, what sort of return did you get on that? Was it greater than the two to three percent that we normally see? I, I would. I've got fifty people in the program doing reviews. Fifty. Out of, out of like. I, hard to say, but I mean, I honestly, I wouldn't have had those reviews. Well, had you I just put it. this one up. Uh, what yeah, was it? It's a hard. Month, to, month it's hard from an app. Yeah, it's it's hard from a. It's hard to go. Okay, this is the. You know, I, I have a review list of fifty two people I know did X, and came back and got the code for it. But you know, it's hard to say would I have had that many reviews had I not done it? Probably not, because people don't like to review. They don't take their time and review a book. They'll give you a quick star rating, maybe. I think the star rating is 7% versus the 1 to 3. The 1 yeah. to 3 is the actual, they like sit down that. and they write something about your book. And it's usually either your diehard fans <laughs> or, or people, people really that were emotionally either attached or revolted by the book. So, <laughs> yeah, they're kind of arbitrary, but they kind of they kind of help. Well, you know, I actually, I, I'd love to get up a whole fucking cohort of, of indie readers a hundred of them and just we all do you know we all check each other's books and give an honest review and actually do reviews so everybody's got a decent amount and you know it's informed but well, the, i haven't well, put the, it together yet though the, the problem with that though is that amazon tracks who is doing your reviews if you're not careful about cutting off your uh your ref code on your URL that you're sending people, or if you are a documented friend with them on Facebook, they will actually pull your reviews. A friend yes. of mine was actually triggered in an audit. Um, he he writes the, the, the poems for the epigraphs for the beginning of my books. Um, my mother bought his book, reviewed it, and that triggered a review of his reviews, and he had half of his reviews pulled down. Every single one that was made by someone he was associated with on Facebook was eliminated. They're unforgiving. So there's this huge- But that's Jesus. bullshit because half of the people that I'm friends with on Facebook, I don't know, they're just right. following me because they like to read what I write and they want to know what the right. hell I'm doing. Yes, which is totally like, yes, that's a soapbox that I stand on all the time. Like indies and selfies how are we going to advertise more often than not it's at least 50 percent boots on the ground sort of advertising it is. where you're Very interacting marketing yeah one on one with readers fans potential readers potential fans and a lot of times those people if you're doing it right follow you on fucking facebook so now all of a sudden there's a potential for those fan reviews to become null and void oh, and if, i get if, where amazon's coming from because <laughs> are a lot of scams out there to get reviews and i understand that yeah. um but at the same time it, it's kind of like okay there's going overboard is what it comes yeah. down to and they are yeah. going but if people bought the book who cares if they know you or not and that's the kicker if somebody they bought, bought the book, the book they, they have the right to review it review i'm sorry they should i don't care who they are i don't care if it's your mom if they bought your book they should be able to review it that just goes without saying well, when the 50, 50 reader threshold determines what they do with it from a, an, an exposure perspective, that corporate decision is going to see, I can go find a 50 friends and relatives in pretty short order, get a shit ton of five stars or four and a half, and then put a trash book up, that's going to hammer Amazon. And though I hate Amazon from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet, I can understand their perspective. They have to protect themselves hey, against 90%, that, that 96% bullshit. 96% of the money I make off my books comes from fucking Amazon, so yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. We're kind of bound to this, you know, sort of thing. But the, the rules that were put in place by Amazon where they were like, if you know this person or you have a connection yeah. with them, it's coming down, was not put in place because of the people who have... 50 reviews it was we're, we're in working place. for those man. we are we are working <clears throat> for, for sure that for sure yeah it but it was put in place because of these like review rings that were sort of happening where you could you i know buy and reviews oh, okay buy yeah, a thousand. Buy reviews. <clears throat> yeah they're oh, gonna okay. 299 you give them you know 50 bucks they not only buy the book but they also make money off of it and they give you a review, and it's bullshit. You shouldn't yeah. be doing that. And so now we, as indies and selfies, are suffering because of, you know, it's that whole, you know, laws get made because somebody, you know, does something wrong really big. And then oftentimes it's the little guy 
who ends up paying paying the price, you know, and yeah. getting audited because we're accessible and many. And most of the publishers know. have their own little sticks about how to get reviews. I mean, they've got a whole marketing engine in place, including yeah. a solution for getting those reviews. Yeah. So when I see a brand new book come out and I see twelve hundred reviews, I know damn well what happened. Right, and it's, there's a four point eight average. Of course, right away, that's a lot of bullshit. Yeah, you know that yeah. that's falsified. You know that that's contrived. But I, you know, here I'm going to lose this train of thought here. So I have to kind of like do this Go. weird like 180 thing and and bring up something else, like in terms of the the rating thing. I have had two um, terrible reviews happen, and one of them was uh, Rob. You kind of touched on this whole like stars without actual text sort of thing, where you're like, what the fuck did I do wrong? Um, and it's very frustrating. This same person reviewed me both on Goodreads and on Amazon, right? So on Goodreads, she just left stars, one star. I was like, okay, that's really fucking frustrating. I wish there were some context there. Now she went over to Amazon and left a review, a one star review, and actually left text. The reason she gave it a one star review was because Great Britain had it misshelved as crime drama because they don't have my subgenre available. Uh, there is no reason that I should be shelved that way. I'm my settings are, are are set so that I am not shelved that way. So basically, she bought my book thinking that it was crime drama, got it, realized that it was a para thriller and was like, "What the fuck is this? This is That not happened to me too. I've been I have been That's missed. awesome. Yeah, yeah that just I need to make sure you guys give me all the categories your books go into by the way that's so a good I idea. Sure. yeah. Yes. I will, because that's aggravating. But there's one yes. other thing that has that has happened, and that I have seen happen um, with with reviews um, on books, especially if they're only available in uh, in hard copy. If there's no no Kindle copy, is that I have seen one star reviews happen, and this is an Amazon problem, right? Um, I've seen one star reviews happen because it took too long to get the book. Because the book showed up damaged. It has absolutely no nothing nope. to do with the content or quality of the book. But that customer is pissed off at the service that they have received from the company that is providing the book. And so therefore, I mean, whether they're idiots or not, I mean, like, I, I get maybe in some universe how you could misunderstand how you're how you're reviewing this thing, that you're you think you're reviewing Amazon, but you're not. Um, but the consequence is is the same either way, regardless of whether they understand. Well, in 99 percent of the time, when you go to leave a review, you're leaving it there for the company. You're leaving it there for the person that sold it. So they don't necessarily realize that you didn't produce this yourself and mail it to them on your own. Is that really true, though? I mean, yes, Amazon. It is. I have all been of, there are, yeah, there are people who years. probably leave that your whole house full of countries to do nothing for but... all of the history of selling shit online. Your review is always sent toward the person that is sending the product, and the person that is sending the product is 99.9% .9 of the time the person who listed the product. I don't know if I agree with that. No, I think the only example that I can come up with that actually follows that model is eBay. Um, nope. And like the heyday of eBay was definitely aligned with leave a review. And that was that was the review of the seller, not the product. It's on but Amazon too. Amazon has independent sellers. Craigslist has independent sellers. All there, there are Etsy, uh, Shopify, all yeah, of the I'm not I'm not discounting the fact that you can review sellers, but I do discount the fact that that ninety percent of of purchasers are confused about who they're leaving a review for. I, I think that no. some are, but I would say that most people are fully aware of 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 what they're of what no. they're reviewing when they when they do it. You um, must understand. Okay. The na the account name that things are listed under when you re when you review an item it affects the seller's profile yeah and that's why the reviews are left on the item people won't realize that because it's a book you are not responsible for the quality because the mindset is 
in all other in in every other case of products unless you're a drop shipper that if the item comes to you damaged or poor quality it is the fault of the seller and that is everything except books so so glacia were you saying that 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 you had I understand the 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 uh, improperly shelved or categorized because I ran into that too. Got destroyed on one of my ratings, and it was because the person w w had no uh, idea what it was, which is ridiculous because it's printed on the cover. Mm -hmm. At any rate, um, but the you're saying that the the in your experience, this person was irritated with you as the author because the book came to them dog-eared or banged up or something they were teeing off on on the book because of its condition a content I, I mean i have i have i have been poorly reviewed for what would be called misshelving i have a very good friend of mine who had a book basically kind of get run over by a truck essentially was what the photograph indicated um, and they left a one-star review on the book because the quality of the book wow. was, but was, see, was damaged. All, all other cases, unless you're a self-published author or you are publishing through a publishing company and your name is attached to the product and you have an account attached to that product, in all other cases, when you leave a review, you're affecting the company. Because that re that product that you have just bought came from the account that it's listed under. Everything gets shipped from either them or Amazon. And most people don't know if it's being shipped by Amazon or not. Even though it says it's being shipped by Amazon. It, they don't. They really don't realize it. So they assume if something's wrong, it's your fault. They don't realize you're not printing the book and sending it out yourself. They really don't. You are you would be surprised how dumb consumers are. I have no. I <laughs> actually really. do have uh, yeah, something I, so I do I do have something that kind of goes to this in terms of quality. It was never actually written down uh, as a printed as a as a you know published review. Um, but if you're you know you you jog my memory when you're talking about you know we're not the ones that print the books. I had an issue, and uh, like, all, I've, I've heard this from one reader, you know, but it only takes one, right? Just like yeah. the shelving thing. Um, she did not like, um, she did not like the generic serif uh, typeface <laughs> that, uh, that Kindle oh, that awesome. uses for their <laughs> Ebooks, right? And so she sent it. She she's like, I, I'm I'm sorry, I can't read it. It's unreadable because I can't look at it. And I'm like, what the liberal fuck? Like, if she had left a review, that would have been a one star review because she didn't like Amazon standard serif, generic serif. It's like it's very close to you know Times New, well, but it. I get it. It's retarded. Some of the stuff we get review wise that we're like, what really? Well, right, one of the things you have to do as 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 an independent author when you're not publishing your books and you're not selling you know sending them out yourself is when somebody leaves a bad re review for something that you cannot control you have to tell them i'm sorry you didn't like it i have no control of this issue you need to take it up with amazon i, I actually otherwise I, I just... they really don't know yeah, they, they don't. That's true. But I, I see, I find it incredibly distasteful uh, to contact a reviewer, even Absolutely. if it's on the review. And no matter what it is, I think that if mm -hmm. I'm going to handle that, my responsibility is to go to Amazon and be like, hey, guys, this person left a bogus review on my product because of something that has nothing to do with the product. Yeah. You know, you guys shelved it against my recommendations in this country. You guys are the ones who are responsible for it showing up damaged. You know, I mean, yes, but I wouldn't in a million does, years wouldn't yeah. dream of contacting a reviewer and ever, there, never under any circumstance. No, thank and you. in the history Good or of bad. selling stuff. Because I have been, I was an eBay seller back in the day, and I had to deal with this shit all the time. When somebody left you a review that was bad, it was, you were required to, res 
respond to it and handle that issue. Because if they left you a bad review, you had to deal with it on your own. Sure. eBay is not responsible. Yeah, but that's that's People, merchandise. That's and, not. Yeah, that's, but, yes, but yeah. that but a book is merchandise. If it is well, damaged, no, no, no. Hold on. It Selling doesn't a book, matter if it's a shirt or a shoe or if it's a book. If it's damaged in the eBay world, damaged. yes. But I'm talking about we don't give a shit. Or as if I'm in the eBay world selling something, a sticker or a book. I don't give a monkey's about its content because I didn't generate it. If I'm going, if I'm selling one of my books, the then, my... I, then I have an IP issue now. I also have a, a, a reasonable expectation that content is going to be represented properly where it wasn't to, for Glacia and, and, and neither was it in my case. But that's different. That is not really because you're missing the main key is that eBay only recently fell off and Amazon became the dominant. Shoppers are still in the eBay mindset. They haven't changed the way they think about leaving a review or, or how they rate an issue because the eBay mindset was so ingrained in everybody that did this online shopping that when you change something as basic as a review and how it works then it takes a while for the consumer to realize that this is their that they're doing it wrong okay hold on a second but that i mean like ebay hasn't really been a thing for the last 10 years who are the who is the 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 major consumer up and coming right now it's the 18 to 35s right mm -hmm. so there's a there's a huge part of their consumer life, if not the entirety of their consumer life, that was spent outside of the eBay bubble. Agreed. Now, not um, necessarily. Yeah, if that's the, eBay hasn't been all the time. I mean, eBay was a big thing for a while, and it still, and it was it was still going pretty good up until about five years ago. But if they've been around it because their parents were on eBay, or if they had a friend because everybody sold on eBay, like everybody, you know, so this, even the kids, that was the mindset they were set up with. And on, on stores, websites, it's the same way. It's the same eBay, eBay type thing. And you were to respond to the comments that were negative because it was your job to explain to the consumer, either a, there's nothing you can do about it or whatever, or if you needed to address the issue that they were having. And that mindset stays for a very long time unless it's specifically pointed out that it's different. I, I'll give you that, right? I, I, will, I will give you that cultural pervasiveness of a concept is a very powerful thing. But I, I guess to kind of like go back to that, it's our responsibility to deal with, with a review because it's what people are used to. I think for me, you have to abandon that because with eBay, you're you you are providing a product, yes, but really what you are providing is a service. Now we come over here to indie selfie authors in 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 Amazon. We just have a thing, and and we're not even the ones delivering it. And so I think that it's flawed to think that we are responsible for addressing issues even if it does have to do with the condition of the book or how the book is shelved that's still not our responsibility the um uh, i'm not it is, the responsi it is the responsibility of the service provider to deal with when there is problems with the service and because we as artists as as the creators of of this content that is art this is not something that functions like a t-shirt or a television this is something that is consumed and it's a it's 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 objectified and the and and the response is very subjective to what you know how people feel and what they think <clears throat> and what their opinions are and you as a producer of art should not have to address the opinions of somebody positive or negative to the thing well, uh, well, it's, okay. it's real, no real one or we're, we're kind of going off the track a little bit, and I'll give you why. Um, you have to remember, as an indie author, you're absolutely right. We are artists. We are purveyors of art. 
But once we cross the line as an indie author into publishing, we are now a business. We are now a company that provides a product to a customer. Therefore, it is our job to interface with not only the customer for customer service, but also the um, logistics specialist, in this case Amazon, to ensure our product gets to the door on time. We have now expanded our own job description because of what we're doing. The job that a publisher would do, which is track down this issue and solve it, is now on us. So we have now gone beyond just being an author and just writing a book. We are now a business. We are now a provider of a product. And we need to understand that. And in doing that, we also need to handle these issues that come up. Yes. I think that just ran I, I think that just ran outside my boundary because I have a publisher who would piss razor blades if Amazon did that. Right. And, well, and so he, but but for a selfie or for you know, for a true indie that I mean, do you how do you get yours into hard well, copy? See, the what thing do you do? Is, and I have both run businesses. And the first key to to keeping customers and to selling things is to interact and to provide an, a, a little bit of help. This book came to me badly. They don't know that you're not responsible for it. A simple, hey, I'm sorry that happened. You'll need to contact Amazon because I have nothing to do with that. But wait, no, hold on. So we, I, I, we're going, we are going off the track. The hottest th I'm, I'm getting back to the review and the star rating bit, which is what we were talking about. Yeah, You're talking right. about it's commerce it's and, a, and a tangible object that you can hold in your hand. I, I, I th I'm, I'm with Glacia on this. I'm talking about the disconnect between us as content generators and and that the separation is obvious. I, I don't physically print these books. I don't put them in a in a box and send them to somebody. I don't even do it electronically. I have uh, I have I, my publisher but, does. But print that is your demand. publisher's responsibility to deal with those issues. Yeah. Okay. So now, so what are you suggesting that an indie selfie that is that was in Glacia's spot? is obliged by that direct purveyor relationship to do something that I, as a published author, don't do. Well, they're okay. taking on that yes. responsibility by not getting published. Yes. You actually give up a certain percentage of your book to have that stuff handled for you, whereas mm -hmm. an author has to put on that hat. If you, you are positively responsive to people who have an issue and are giving you a shit rating just because of something that is out of your control, being polite and telling them how to fix the problem will win you loyalty and it will increase the number of people that will come and buy your book and increase the, the likelihood of you getting more positive reviews because they say, oh, well, this is a nice person. Let me go do this. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be pissed off at them for something that they couldn't help. And a lot of times people like that will change the review. They will yeah, they will. Absolutely. A hundred percent. But like, as this is just me personally, I, I think that I'm with Ray on this one. And I think I'm, I think this is kind of what you're saying also, JR. Yes. As, as a, as a, as an indie, as a selfie, it is something that we should be taking upon ourselves to deal with. For me, I would never, ever deal with that with a customer. It is probably my responsibility to be like, whoa, this is wrong. Amazon, hey, go yes. deal with this shit. But I, okay. still, I still would never contact the, the reviewer even to be like, hey, I'm going to take care of this. Mm -hmm. Because if I contact Amazon and go, this is bogus shit, they will deal with it. They well, will make it right with, with the reader. And, you know, I mean, if we're talking about quality here in terms of, like, a damaged item, that works. If if you're talking about, like, you know, Rob and I have had this issue about being, you know, misshelved. That's something that's not really quite as tangible. And but, that's one of those things well, that if you give a polite answer, the person might change their review. No, and, I see, it doesn't matter, though, in my opinion, because if they think it's misshelved, then they thought it was something other than what it is, and if they had known, they wouldn't have read it. So why does it matter? Yes, but that still changes the review, because it's not your fault, so they can't blame you for that. They'll, they get even... And you don't contact them when you're responding to a review. They have a reply. 
so that it's all open in the public. I still think and, that's contact. And other people can see them. Other people can see the issues. So if they have the same problem, they look, they see this review, and they see your answer, and they go, oh, okay. So then they don't even bother to leave you a bad review. They go deal with Amazon. They read the book. If they like it, they'll leave a review. Well, that's true. No, you have and a good point. If I looked at it, a whole lot of trouble in the long run. If I looked at a review from somebody who said, uh, "I'm I'm one starring this because this thing was was misshelved by Amazon or it came with a with a, a a bonk on the corner of my book because my neighbor's truck drove over and his dog pissed on it and I'm aggravated." And I'm going to one star the book. If I saw that review, and it's incredulous to me that somebody would be that stupid. But if they were, I would look immediately to the next review and the next review and the next review because I just looked at something that a dumbass wrote. And I'm going to go right past it. I'm not going to care what they thought about anything. They've been exposed as a dumbass. I'm not interested in their opinion. If you're that stupid... Do not expect me to pay the slightest degree of attention to you. But customer service is the key. This is a very customer service oriented society that we are in. And Agreed. Service, service and, and offering but, them a solution is the most important thing of a business. I don't envy selfies and indies, indies having to go through that because, and that's one of the reasons why I was a selfie for a grand total of 23 seconds and said, <laughs> piss on this. And, and I, I don't regret it, but there you, you do raise, right. You have to wear other hats. And I, I, I understand that. I appreciate it. Um, okay. So this, this doesn't change my opinion on Ray uh, on stars. I think I'm a little more malleable on rating. I, I'm excuse me on, on reviews. Um, yeah. I'm at the end of my time rope for the day. I've got to go, but um, th uh, okay. So I, I I'm going to suspend my blog about it because I, it, it, to me, that would be a one-sided rant. I, I like the perspective that I got from everybody here. And so that helps. I'm, I hope others did too. I well, think there the are some, thing yeah. is shit. I'd rather see the reviews without the stars. Um, yeah, I, 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 I'm good either way, honestly. I, I use it for feedback. But, I mean, from a from an author standpoint, there are places you can go out and get your book reviewed between $50 and $100, and there are groups who will review your book for you. So yeah. there are options for gaining reviews. Yes, they are paid, but like anything else, marketing is marketing. You know, Buy, reviews are still bad business. Because if Amazon finds out about it, they will take all those oh, down. There are groups the out there. Can, oh, train. this this is official. Somebody buys your book and reviews it. That is absolutely well within the Amazon license, by the way. That is yes, absolutely well within the Amazon. They still take it down. Uh, no, like, they don't because they've actually like earlier, if I've actually gone through this. There are as long as they buy your book. Or they put in their review that they were paid to do this review. It is well within the license of Amazon. Just make sure they do. If you take a look at reviews, you will see in some of them it says, you know, it says I was I was paid to do this review. As long as they're doing that, that is a that is an actual tangible review. So that's so okay. You need to make sure that you remind them to do that then. Yes, that's part of what you do when you get a review paid. And just real quick, before everybody jumps off the screen, I wanted to give an update. We've got a lot of things happening over the next couple of weeks on Authors and Chains. We've got people coming in for interviews. And just to kind of give you guys who are listening an idea, we've got uh, we've got a couple of authors. You know, we're looking at for reviews. Uh, Keith D. Candido, who does the Star Trek and the Supernatural and the Aliens books, is going to come on and join us. We've got. Christopher Waccio, who does the, the the Soren Empire books, is looking to come on and join us for a night. Anthony Dabransky, who does Demon and Business Class, is looking to come on and join us for a night, as well as more. So stay tuned in the future, because we're going to have some great people coming on and talking about their books and how they work. 